Hello folks, I am back with a firearms unboxing and impression of the Performance Center Portet 45 Shield M2.0 High-Vis Sights. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, I originally had a MMP of 45 and I liked it in the beginning but began to really hate it and it was all because of the trigger. And I got rid of that firearm. Now, I know a lot of you said that I could have probably uh, replaced the triggers with, with uh, Apex trigger, etc. But for me, when I have a firearm, it has to reasonably work uh, adequately before I do any type of uh, modifications or anything like that. And for the most part, uh, most of my firearms are stock triggers they have stock triggers except for two of them but i'll get back to the trigger portion on this in a moment so i decided to give smith and wesson another uh chance because i was i'm not really happy with that trigger and because they came out with the m 2.0 i decided to uh give it a shot okay let me go with the unboxing here um uh, as you see here uh smith and wesson uh, still do the cardboard box thing but you know uh it's what's important inside the boxes is, is all that matters a lot of uh companies you know have cases etc here you have your manual your warranty uh sign up and inside here here's a spare mag uh this is six rounds and here's the firearm here I'm going to take that out. It was already uh, previously checked, so it is unloaded, but I'll do that again. This is a seven-round mag, uh, so this one has a larger uh, extension on it. I'll get to that in a moment. And here you see it is safety check. Nothing is in here. Uh, and like I was saying uh, with the firearm, it comes with all these uh, different things here. Uh, one of the unique things, if you purchase a performance center firearm i've never seen this it comes in a really nice case i thought the firearm would come in a nice case but uh this is a case for your cleaning kit this is your performance center cleaning kit and you have your various uh brushes and so forth here uh your this is for your swabs because they do give you uh patches or swabs that you can can use um that's your handle uh, rod to attach all these uh, different uh, uh, brushes with. Uh, and here's an extended rod here for uh, just so you'll be able to be able to reach. Uh, your brushes are in here. And there are some other uh, tools that I'm not familiar. Oh, yeah, this is for also for your swabs as well. But it's uh, pretty neat that they come uh, with all all these uh, things inside here. So uh, it really, I've never had a firearm kit like that where it comes with all these uh, features here. And of course, you have your regulated uh, firearms lock, which everybody uses as a paperweight. And that's your other safety uh, thing for the breach. Let me get into the firearm. Uh, as you see here, it does come with two magazines. Uh, the one magazine, like I said earlier, is um, seven rounds. And as you see with it in, it gives you a pretty uh, large purchase on here for your hand. And even with the flush fit, the flush fit isn't bad in my hands. Other people's hand size may vary a little bit. So you'll have that. But let me get into some of the... Um, the specs on this uh for starters you know it is a 45 uh, that's my favorite caliber but this is a uh, 45 acp i've mentioned that it comes with two magazines already uh the barrel length on this is 3.3 inches 3.3 inches and that barrel is ported i don't know if you can see that really well but the barrel is ported. There are your ports right here. And also uh, with that, you'll see that because it's a performance center, it also has 
the ported uh, slides right here up top here on both sides. There are six uh, holes in that. Uh, it, I, I guess that it enables it uh, like as the slides with the Glocks that they used to have on the Glock 34. So it is a ported um, slide as well as a barrel. And so that's a good feature. I remember the earlier Glocks, you had to have that specially done to have your barrel ported. So th that's uh, pretty neat that you're a they're able to, to accommodate you that way. And I'm trying to get it in focus, but it does. There we go. Camera's a little fussy today. Uh, also, for other features on here, the overall length of this uh, whole uh, firearm here is 6.5 inches. The front sight is the what they call their high-vis sight. Uh, it's a high-vis um, fiber optic, and it's green in color. It's a high-vis green uh, fiber optic. And then... The rear, they call that the fiber, uh, the uh, high vis uh, fiber optic sight as well. Your two here, they're not trinium, they're just uh, fiber optic, so it will do well in the daytime shooting and so forth, where the light will catch and you'll be able to uh, get your uh, be able to get target acquisition. And my camera, for some reason today, is not acting right, but. That's what it is, your high-vis sights. And, yeah, you can see a little better, probably a little better. So that's your sight picture. Uh, I have it on an angle, but this would be more like your sight picture. Uh, the other thing about this is this is the weight of this firearm is... 22.6 ounces, which isn't bad. This is a really nice weight. I'm used to having some firearms that are above 24 ounces. So this is a um, pretty good weight, uh, considering that this is a 45 ACP firearm. Um, the barrel, we went through that it is a ported, it is stainless steel. And the slide is stainless steel as well. As you see here, it has the it has the MMP logo here with the 45 shield and performance sitter with the M2.0 uh, and your Smith & Wesson logo. Uh, as always, one, they make some of the best cocking serrations out there. They look uh, kind of like uh, fish fins or whatnot. Uh, going on the other side, uh, the, it's there again. Of course, Smith & Wesson always put on the, a little bit of a warning here that states that caution capable of firing with magazine removed. So if you have one in the chamber, it will fire. Uh, it's similar to a Glock, and that's, I guess, one of their legal department has to um, have, have Smith & Wesson put that on their uh, firearms. It, a lot of people don't like it, but it is what it is. Um, Here's some more uh, cocking serrations here. Uh, I don't know how, I haven't really shot it at the range yet, so this is just an over, just a, a quick, re, a quick um, uh, impressions. Uh, I don't think anybody will be press checking with this little space here, so that's going to be, for you guys who like to press check, that's going to be one of the things that you're not going to be happy about because... It, it doesn't give enough room for press checking, but I'm an overhand guy, so that's not a big deal. Or some people want to do is they want to pull pull from the rear with the serrations in the rear there. Uh, like I said before, the finish is matte black. Uh, the, tr the trigger on here is a performance center uh, trigger. Uh, this was performance center tuned, and I'll... I'll I, like I said, I really hated the um, MMP before, the MMP 45 I had before. So this is the newer generation. Uh, here, here you see, you'll, he you'll have that sound. I don't know if you can hear it. But it's at, a, at the wall here. That's your wall. You'll hear that noise, and you pull your trigger. That's it. And 
I'm going to release the trigger and have the trigger so you can hear it. And that's it. That's its audible click. I'm going to try to get this thing focused a little better. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Now I'm going to whack the slide again. Here we go with the trigger. Maybe that's what's going on. You'll hear that creep. And you'll hear that. There's no slack after you'll get right there. You hear it, you watch it come up to reset. The reset is not too long, but when you get that wall and then that's it. Now, if you look closely, there's a little stop right here and the stop right here, it, it the trigger breaks right at that stop. It, exactly right at that stop and if you notice there's a little uh, nub on the back of the trigger so it goes it so it just stops right there that nub just touches uh, the the stop right here which is on the uh, the, the uh, trigger guard there okay the uh, the frame here is polymer but it's it has a steel chassis system like most of of your firearms. Uh, I'm going to take this down. It is a little stiff because it's fairly, it's just got it out the shop and you pull, you have to pull the trigger to take off the slide. And as you see here with all, with most striker fire firearms, they do have the dual recoil spring. This is not oiled at all, really. It's, uh, I'm going to have to oil this before I take this out to the range. It looks like it's bone dry. And again, you'll see you'll see the uh, ports right here at the top 45 auto and a nice polished ramp i don't know if they test fired it or not but it looks like it needs a little bit of a cleaning there so they might have test fired this at their performance center uh as as you see here it it's pretty much uh what you would see in most striker fire firearms Pretty normal, uh, and inside your slide is pretty pretty normal. Uh, I do not know what these little dots mean right here. I'm gonna have to check that out later. The, there are the I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's three dots. It's almost like it's braille, but there's a, one dot here, two to the right of it, and two up. So I don't know if that's some kind of code that they got in their machining, how they do their machine work. I don't know what that is. And there's nothing up top here that shows there's some type of indication for that. So I'm going to have to look into that and figure what that is. And of course, you'll see your firing pin block at the rear, reminiscent of the probably the Gen 3, Gen 4 Glocks and so everything here. Uh, I noticed one thing about this ramp here. It's not actually a ramp, but where the slide comes back. Most of your striker fire firearms have this this rail right here with that this that when the slide rides up against this section here, you normally lubricate that so it would have a smooth action. I don't know if you can see there is a slight dip. Or like like a ramp that goes down, and all this is connected, going straight, and then it drops down. I've never it, and it, I can't if I can just get it focused. I don't know if you could tell or not, but this bevels in here. It bevels like a little channel, like uh, like a, a like a little channel. Like if if I were to put oil in it on this, the Oil would drip into the ch this channel here, or maybe this is a better angle so you can see what I'm talking about right here. I've never seen that on a firearm before, but I will check this out at another time and try to figure that out. Uh, let me get this back together. It's just a reverse process. And like I said, this is one of the 
firearms that everybody talks about, the shields, some people swear by them. A lot of people have them in 9mm, but I look at it this way. I'm a 45 person, so I would like this in a, um, a 45 construction. And I'll just pull the trigger, make sure everything's worked in order. And, and uh, like I said, it, uh, when I was showing you the inside of that, it's uh, pretty interesting how they have this, uh, that internal uh, situation set up. Uh, you see a huge extractor right here. I'm not sure if there's an indicator on there for a loaded indicator. I, I never really t uh, loaded it with anything, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if there's a loaded indicator, but most extractors will stick out and you'll be able to feel that. Uh, let's do, let's look at, before I do a comparison real quick, the texture here, usually the last M&P that I had, you could take out the the back por portion and change to different size, but on this particular, uh, particular firearm, you can't. So this is an aggressive, but not over aggressive um, texture. And it feels good in the hand. It feels grippy. And it has to be because you're. this is a 45 ACP. Um, I'm not sure if this uh, the magazine release is swappable, but it probably is. I have to read the directions further. But I mentioned earlier about the magazines. And it, what I, I noticed with this particular magazine, you, it kind of like, looks like a bullet as it as like if you have like a two two three it kind of goes uh like at a point so it kind of like streamlines everything to a point so if you look over here you put your magazine in and you have good hand uh good hand grip here some firearms they they do do a good grip or but they don't give you an extra uh, round, uh, I think uh, Kalyan Noir calls it a ceremonial uh, grip because it doesn't give you an extra round. Uh, yeah, and but this gives you, let's say, uh, seven rounds. Here's the flush plate one with six rounds, and it's not too bad. It does hang if you look here, it hangs a little bit, but it's not too bad. I think you're, I have to shoot it to find out how sturdy this is going to be, but I will have that video out in, uh, probably next week to give you my shooting impressions of that. Uh, just to do a comparison, because they're, single stacks are kind of like all the rage right now, and, and one of the reasons why I got this is because uh, it's, it's summertime's coming up, we're in spring and going into summer, and I wanted something a little more flat to the body, uh, I've been carrying other firearms that were double stacked, so I wanted some a little bit more concealment. And just for comparison's sake, another popular single stack. This is the uh, Glock 43X. Now, if you look at both of them, they, uh, both of them, they're about the same height, actually. Uh, even though the Glock 43 is a um, nine millimeter if you look here the if you look here the rear is like like that with the mat and these this is with the magazines in so the height is pretty much the same the unfortunately i'm trying to get a good angle so you can see this uh the slide lengths are not too bad they're about almost the same with a little bit of the edge going to the M&P M &P at this point. Uh, if you, and let's go on the sides. Their profiles are a little bit similar, but with a, with a more exaggerated curve. Well, the curves are just about right, but they're pretty much similar that way. The difference that I can see, if you look in the back here, it looks like that the Glock 43X 
is a little bit wider in the grip area right over here. It looks a little wider and this is a little bit thinner. And, but the biggest difference that you could tell is the width of the slide on the M&P because it's a 45 caliber. Now, if there was the nine millimeter version, it would probably be roughly about uh, so closer in size, but because it's the 45 version, it's it's not. Uh, and that's pretty uh, that's pretty interesting that they still shrunk down a uh, 45 caliber slide, so it's it's very close to the Glock 43. Now my Glock 30 is a rough. I I'm sorry I didn't bring that out. It's a little more girthier. So right now I'm just uh, I'm just waiting till next week when I can get a chance to get to the range to give you a better shooting impression. And um, at this point, I kind of like my purchase so far, just dry firing, but it doesn't tell you uh, much. But I'm, I'm really happy that I got this uh, so far. The price was extremely reasonable. I mean, I mean it, it, you're talking 450 for this, a performance center version, and you're talking $100 less for the non-performance center version, which there are optional ones that have the uh, the safeties on it. Well, with that said, I uh, that's all I have for now. I will get back to you to let you know my shooting impressions on it. So happy shooting. Stay safe. Hashtag 2A. Take care, folks.